The Lord be with you. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to St. Bartholomew's, the old church, today for this service of Holy Communion. We're gathered together to bring our praises to God, to hear his word, to bring our needs to him in prayer, and then to gather around his table and receive the meal that he has prepared for us uh, on our journey uh, as we walk with him to heaven. Uh, I'm so pleased uh, that you're here, and uh, if you're joining us at home uh, watching online, uh, so glad that you've been able to tune in. Um, Just a couple of practical things for those of us who are in the church building. If you haven't been able to sign in with the NHS app, could you please fill in a test and trace form uh, and put it in a basket as you leave the church at the end of the service? I'm telling you now so that you've got plenty of time to fill it in and you're not rushing uh, at the end. Uh, And also, we won't take up a a collection during the service itself, uh, but we will um, have a retiring collection, and there's a basket uh, by the exit for you uh, as you leave, if you'd like to make a donation in that way. Uh, Now, um, due to our restrictions, we're not uh, allowed to uh, sing as a congregation as of yet, although uh, some of us have been enjoying humming along with the choir. We're delighted that the choir is here uh, to lead us in singing, uh, and they're going to uh, lead us in singing our first hymn now, which is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please sit or kneel as we pray. Almighty all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, 
our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm you and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself and so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Saskia is going to bring us our first reading. A reading from Exodus chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. 
the people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. This is the word of the Lord. Please, if you're able, would you stand for the Gospel reading? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please would you take your seats. We're going to think about that Gospel reading for a few moments together. And as I read it, perhaps it um, washed over you a little bit. When you, particularly if you're familiar with the stories of Jesus Christ, they can all sort of begin to blur together, can't they? We know Jesus is a great teacher, a great miracle worker, a great healer. And so here is just another example of him doing a great healing. The thing that's really interesting about this story is its placement. This is the first miracle of Jesus that Matthew records in his Gospel. And it comes straight after the Sermon on the Mount. And it looks like Matthew has put it there for a reason. He sort of changed the order around compared to the other Gospels to, to teach us something. The question is, what, what's he teaching us? Well, remember at the end of the Sermon on the Mount last week, again, a story that sounds familiar the wise man and the foolish man building their houses. But if you were here last week, you might remember, actually Jesus is saying some really shocking things at the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. He's, he says that basically that it's possible to look like you're worshipping God when really you're worshipping yourself. It's possible to look like you're serving others and doing good in the world when really you're serving yourself. There's a distinction that he draws between those sort of two groups of people and one of the most shocking things, they're all listening to him right there and then. If you like, they're all sitting here in church. So he's saying, be wise, be like the wise man who really is worshipping God and listening to Jesus and serving others. Not like the foolish man who looks like he's doing all those things but really isn't. But if that's what he's saying at the end of the sermon, the question is, how do we be like the wise man? I hope you could feel the urgency of that a little bit. If I could be sitting here this morning, standing here right now, looking like I'm serving God and others, but really serving myself, if that's at all a danger, how do we avoid it? I think Matthew puts this particular little healing story where he puts it, straight after the Sermon on the Mount, to show us how to be like the wise man. Let me try and explain a little bit what I mean. This isn't just an ordinary healing story. There are a few details in it that sort of sh speak to us, shout at us, that there's something a bit more going on. Firstly, there's something a bit more going on in the leper's approach to Jesus. Now, this, this leper, we don't exactly know what the skin disease he has. Probably it wasn't what we today call leprosy. The, the word applies to a whole range of different skin diseases in, in the Bible. But what they seem to have had in common is that they were very painful, very damaging to you. They were basically untreatable and they spread very, very easily. So that for this man with this skin disease, his life was unimaginably bleak. Physically, he had a disease that was eating away at him. Socially, we know, might know a bit, little bit of this. He was in permanent self-isolation. 
If you read what the, the early Jewish sources say about people who have these sort of skin diseases, they instigated a sort of rudimentary test and trace program. If, if you even stood under a tree where a leper had stood, you had to self-isolate. Socially, he therefore would have been cut off from almost any contact with another human being. And spiritually, throughout the Old Testament, these skin diseases are presented as sort of pictures of what it looks like to be cut off from God. So it really is incredible here that this leper makes his way to Jesus. One commentator says he's making a mad dash for life. Maybe he's heard something about Jesus that if I can just get to him, a mad dash for life. He's risking everything to, to come out of his isolation and head to Jesus, especially when, as Matthew says at the start, there are huge crowds around him. It would be a bit like someone with an awful dry cough and clearly burning up with fever. And I don't know, eating a chili to show that they didn't have any sense of taste or smell. It would be like something like that, running in here today. Or, or, or better, running into the Houses of Parliament. Just mad dash straight into the middle because they heard that the cure was around here somewhere. That's what this man does in this story. Now, you might think, well, is it that extraordinary for him that he'd be that, you know, crazy? If he thinks the cure is here, well, you would do anything, wouldn't you? If you had this kind of disease, you might think, well, all social inhibitions, that forget it. Here's what's so extraordinary about what this man does. He makes this mad dash for Jesus. But then listen to what he says to Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He doesn't tell Jesus what to do. He doesn't demand that Jesus heal him. He doesn't even plead. You think in a desperate state. If you are willing, you can make me clean. He says, look, it's clearly something that I need from you, Jesus. But if you are willing, in other words, I think, you know better than I do what my need is. I'm not going to come here and tell you this is what you need to do for me. But I have an enormous need. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now just think for a second, what a scary thing that would be for the man to say as if he didn't have any power in this situation already. He loses it all by putting himself completely at Jesus' mercy. And in another of the stories of a, of a miracle, there's a blind man who goes to Jesus. Well, here's Jesus coming, and we read he throws away his cloak and heads for Jesus. Again, that's a, a very stupid thing to do if Jesus can't help him. He wouldn't get his cloak back. He was blind. He wouldn't find it again. He's put himself right out on a limb here. And that's what this leper is doing. But he doesn't tell Jesus what to do. And I think this is why he is here for us. To show us how to respond to Jesus. To be like him in this response. To go to Jesus for help, to know we need to do that, but not to tell him what to do for us. Now, if you just think about it for a second, if Jesus is who he says he is, if he is as the person that Matthew thinks he is, then to do what this leper does actually makes perfect sense. This is the rational, this is the logical thing to do. If Jesus was just you know, you're better than average teacher and miracle worker. If he was someone who, who dispensed good advice to you, then you might expect to go to him and take his word seriously, but you'd have a, a bit of back and forth. Jesus, let me explain my situation a little bit. You've got to understand some things about me. We might bring our issues to him. We might think, oh, I might have to twist his arm. He might not quite understand what's going on with me. But if he's not just a better than average teacher, but is the author of life itself. If he is the designer, if he is the one who knows us to the very core of our being, then it would be crazy to think that we could tell him 
what our biggest need is, wouldn't it? And not just a crazy thing to do. Actually, when you start to think about it, very dangerous for us. This week, I, I caught an interview that the actor Jim Carrey did with um, a TV show in the UK. And he talks about his practice of what he calls manifesting success. So through his life, basically, he, has, he said he learned it from Christians to think and meditate upon the things that he wanted in his life. And the Christian said, pray about those things. And then he found he got what he asked for. So he talks about when he was a little boy, he heard about this idea of praying for things you want and he prayed for a bike and he got it. And then through his career, as an early struggling comedy actor, he wrote himself a check for $10 million and post-dated it to a date in 1995. And he basically spent four or five years manifesting success, thinking, meditating upon his desires, wanting to make $10 million. And he had his check that he'd written to himself. And in 1995, he signed a contract for a movie that paid him $10 million. He got, it, he got what he wanted. What was really striking in the interview is that the, the, the audience burst into spontaneous applause. They were in awe of this, wow, what an incredible thing to do. What in, an incredible achievement for him. But if you know anything about Jim Carrey's career, you'll know that he himself says that success, the stuff he as a struggling comedy actor, success has done terrible damage to him. So in another interview just a few years ago, he said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and get everything they dreamed so they can see that's not the answer. Carey came to a realization, his 1990s self manifesting that success, those riches and so on, he was asking God for really stupid things as he looked back, he was asking God for really dangerous things, things that when he got them, did him terrible damage. But at the time, it seemed like just what he needed. And actually, when you think about it, you think that's true for all of us. I think of my younger self. As a child, I would make terrible deals with my brother just because I wanted some food. If I was hungry, I'd give away anything to get food. You think, well, of course, that was, that was just silly or things I wanted as a teenager or in my 20s. Things that I prayed about and asked God for. If God had given them to me, they would have done me terrible harm. But here's the thing. What makes me think that the things that I ask for now in the present are really that much better? What will my 10 years in the future self think about some of the things I was asking for now? That is why we need to come to Jesus like this leper does. We come and we say, here's what I think I need. If you are willing, you can give me these things. But my perspective is limited. You know best. You're not just a good advisor. You're the author of life. You see much better than I do what I need right now. So if you are willing... Not to say that to Jesus in each one of our lives, not to say that is illogical and it might well cause us great harm. But of course, it's still hard, isn't it? As you think about this leper's situation, as he's kneeling before Jesus, he's made this mad dash for life and he's given away all power. He is completely at Jesus' mercy. Matthew is encouraging us, urging us to do by the, by the way he tells this story. If this is what it looks like to be like the wise man, to kneel before Jesus and say, if you are willing, but I trust you, you know best. That is a, that, that's one of the hardest things for humans to do. Perhaps it's why Jesus in the sermon talks about this being the narrow way. That's hard to find. Because it doesn't come naturally to any of us. Which is why it's such good news to, for us to be able to observe Jesus' response to this leper as well. What's extraordinary about this story is not just the, the way the leper approaches Jesus, 
but also the way that Jesus approaches the leper. And in fact, it's incredible that Jesus even comes near him at all. Remember what I said about lepers, these people with these skin diseases. Everyone stayed clear of them. You wouldn't even be under a tree that someone, a leper had been under. But what does Jesus do? Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. What Jesus does for this man is nothing short than full and complete healing. We know about Jesus that he doesn't need to touch people to heal them. In fact, some of the very next stories, we find him healing without any physical touch whatsoever. He doesn't need to do this. There's a reason that he reaches out and touches him. And perhaps if you've had the experience of self-isolating, of shielding, of not being able to hug your grandchildren or your children, or you can see maybe why he does it. This man, starved of physical touch, Jesus reaches out. But Jesus doesn't just reach out in compassion, as incredible as that is. He reaches out with the power to actually heal him. Years of shame, years of isolation, years of pain, gone in a moment. And as if to sort of layer it on even more, Jesus then sends him to a priest to go and get his negative test result, basically. I'm free from infection. I can be let back into society completely. You see that all the layers of restoration that Jesus brings for this guy. And this story is put here for us, I think, to say to us, if you understand what it means to come before Jesus like this leper, well, just look at what happens when you do. You find with Jesus a man of incredible power, married with incredible compassion. And when those two things go together, here is a man you can trust. And actually even more so than the leper, we have insight that Matthew gives us into just why Jesus can do this for this man. Just a few sentences on in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 17, he quotes from the prophet Isaiah. He says about the healings that Jesus is doing, he says, this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. All these stories of healing that Matthew is going to recount in this next section, we're going to look bigger story. They're, they're incredible acts in themselves of Jesus' compassion and power, but they also sort of paint a bigger picture for us. A picture where this whole world has been knocked out of kilter. All of reality has cracks running through it. Physical disease, isolation, shame, all these things are manifestations of something deeply wrong with our world. We're not in sync with it. We know that this year maybe more than any other. Sickness, disease, grief, brokenness are a fact of our lives now. Matthew thinks that Jesus came to bring complete healing for this broken creation. All the rifts, all the cracks healed. But the way that he does that he took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Matthew sees Jesus on the way to his own painful death on the cross, where Jesus bears up the, the curse that this creation is under upon his own self. The full weight of our sin and shame, our infirmities, our diseases, he carries the whole cosmic weight of all that is wrong with our world. At the very heart of it, humanity's sin, their rejection of our maker. And he bears the full cost of it. That's where he's going in Matthew's Gospel, from the, almost from the very beginning. And these little healings, like this one, are just a foretaste of the complete healing 
that Jesus will bring for his creation one day. A healing that he brings about by bearing up our infirmities, bearing the full weight of the curse that creation is under. And in the end, that is the reason that we can make our own mad dash for life to Jesus as well. Why we can do this thing that is no doubt hard, to fall at his feet in our need and not tell him what we need from him exactly, to trust him. Because he's proven that he loves us. He's proven that actually he is far, far wiser to know what we really need from him. That is the choice that the wise and the foolish builders present to us, embodied in this response of this man. We, either we come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'll tell you what I need from you. Let me tell you right now. And at some level to say to him, if I don't get it from you, I'm walking away. Or to say, Jesus, if you are willing, I trust you. You know what is best for me. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Let's spend a moment in quiet now. And then Nick will lead us in responding in the creed. And then we'll come together to the Lord's table. So let's stand together and declare our faith in these words that Christians around the world have used week by week for the last 1700 years in the creeds. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do sit or kneel as we pray. At the end of each short section of prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. Most mighty and gracious Father, 
We thank you for the compassion and power displayed in the Lord Jesus' ministry. Father, we thank you for that example of the man with leprosy who made his mad dash for life and threw himself entirely on the mercy of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for those in our community who feel like that man who are uh, cut off and on the outside, who perhaps feel disgrace or uncleanness very acutely. Father, give them grace to make that mad dash for life, to come to your son and to find in him a welcome warmer than any they might imagine and a cleansing that makes them entirely clean. Father, we pray, pray too for those in our community who feel complacent, who feel no need of a mad dash for life. Open their eyes, open our eyes to our need of Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in the world and especially in this city and diocese of Birmingham. Father God, we pray that you will endow our bishops David and Anne with your wisdom. By your Holy Spirit, will you guide them in all that you have called on them to do. Lead them as they lead us in this diocese. Father, we ask for particular wisdom for those involved in interviewing the new full-time area deans in the next few weeks. Lord, we long that you will give us godly and wise leaders who will help us to make the news of Jesus known in our community. Father, for this church and congregation and for this parish, we thank you for the new services that we have running. Thank you that we can meet even in limited ways, together to worship. We thank you for all those who've given their time and their energy to develop these services uh, and to make them run. Those involved in uh, cleaning, those involved in welcoming, in music, in technology. Father, we thank you for the gifts that you've given. We thank you for the generosity uh, of those willing to give up their time. And we pray, gracious Father, that uh, the services that we run will enable us to continue to relate to each other, to love each other and care for each other. And Father, for those who uh, remain unable to come to church but who are joining us online, uh, we ask for a a special sense by your Spirit that they are still part of our community and are still loved and cared for and valued. And as we seek ways to uh, continue to love each other and to uh, find ways to socialize together. We pray that you'll give us success in those endeavors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we pray for our city and our community, uh, we think today particularly of the students who have come to Birmingham in the last few weeks. Father, we thank you for the huge contribution the universities make to our civic life. Uh, We thank you for the learning, we thank you for the research, we thank you for the maturing that happens in many young lives over the course of their studies. Father, this is a difficult year uh, to come as a student. Father, many are uh, isolating in flats with people they don't know, cut off from opportunities to make friends, uh, unable to attend lectures, feeling lost and anxious away from home. Father, we pray that you will meet with them, that you will uh, provide uh, friendship for those who need it, comfort for those who are feeling alone. And Father, we pray uh, that at this strange time, as students are asking many questions about life, that you will lead them to ask the biggest questions and that seeking they will find the Lord Jesus as the one who both offers and can deliver what they really need. 
a relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for ourselves and our church community, we pray especially for those feeling concerned, anxious and alone in this time of coronavirus. Father, we know of many who are shielding and unable to come out of their homes, unable to meet with people. Father, please be with them in a special way. May they know something of your touch even at this moment. Father, remind them that you are the same God that that leper encountered in Matthew 8. The God who longs to reach out and touch, to reassure, to cleanse, to make whole. Father, as we pray for those who are shielding from disease, we pray too for those who are sick and particularly in need of our prayers. And in a moment of quiet, uh, we lift up before the Lord those known to us who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare the table for the Lord's Supper, the choir will sing our next hymn. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, We proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave ye thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. body of Christ that was broken for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of items of church family business as we come to the end of our service. The first is to to say that if you don't currently receive our email updates or would like to find out uh, more about what's going on in the life of St Bartholomew's, then um, either you can scan the QR code on the inside of your order of service uh, or follow the web link there, or if you're uh, watching online, uh, click on the link below the video uh, and uh, that will take you to a form where you can uh, put in your details so that we can be in regular touch with you about what's going on. Uh, One of the things that's really sort of kicking back into gear in the last few weeks has been our home groups. We've got a growing number of small groups that meet together to uh, just for for, um, uh, uh, to to study the Bible and pray together, but also just to get to know each other and make a growing church still feel uh, small and intimate. Uh, Those groups are currently meeting online, so um, it doesn't matter whether you're able to come out or not. You can be part of those. Uh, So again, um, you can sign up. Uh, in the same ways uh, to find out information uh, about that. And then the the, the third thing, just to draw to your attention, is that now that we're running two services on a Sunday morning and because we need to clean in between and that kind of thing, uh, we are looking for people to to serve and there are great opportunities to to help each other, to show our our, our love practically in service on a Sunday morning. Uh, I know lots have already signed up for that and I'm hugely grateful. If you haven't yet and would like to, um, or or feel perhaps that that, that's something that that would be good for you to do, then um, uh, similarly you can can click on a link through that web page where you can fill in uh, a little questionnaire about what you might be willing to help with, whether that's uh, helping with the tech for the live streaming or uh, helping with uh, the 9.30 family service, or I won't run through every single possible uh, uh, opportunity now but um, uh, there, there they are and uh, it would be great if you, could, uh, if you could get involved if you're not already. Now as we come to the end of our service uh, the choir are going to sing again Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. Would you please stand? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace 
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.